Good evening, everybody. How are y'all doing tonight? You guys staying warm? Make it through Blizzard 2017? Everyone safe? It was crazy. There was like snow and I had to turn on my windshield wipers. It was woof, rough. All right, if you guys would join us and stand and join us, please. <laughs>
Welcome back this evening. Thank you for being here. Let's go, Lord, in prayer and ask his blessing on the offering. Dearly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And uh, God, I just thank you for what you continually do in our lives and um, through the messages that we hear here, through the songs that we're able to pour out to you. And even that last one, God, what, a, what an amazing uh, song of praise to you. God, I pray that you would use this offering tonight in a mighty way that you would uh, work during this service. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a pathway that's leading To a cross on a hill and if you've never traveled this pathway, you will. And you'll stand there looking at the price paid for you. Will you receive it, take it or leave it? Which one will you do? Don't leave him hanging And just walk away Don't wait any longer You need him today cry that's ringing when you hear him call will you answer at all don't leave him travel this pathway you'll see and learn that some leave without him and never return but they'll find only sadness and sorrow True happiness shows on the faces of those that don't leave him hanging. So don't leave him hanging and just walk away. Don't wait any longer. You need him today and don't keep 
from hearing his cry that's ringing when you hear him call will you answer at all don't leave him hanging Tony plays and sings my kind of music. I said it before, I, I'm a youth pastor, but I, I like the wrong kind of music. To me. Kids, they like, they like crazy music. I don't know. No, I enjoy a lot of kind of music as long as it's glorifying my Lord, my Savior, and uh, it's honoring to Him. So tonight, if you have your Bibles, you can open to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and uh, this is the title right off the beginning. It's, it's all about the walk. It's all about the walk. And uh, I'm not talking about your physical walk, because every single one of us have a, a different walk. Some of us walk fast. Some of us walk slow. Some of us walk with that ghetto lean. Some of us walk with a, a, a waddle. Uh, just because we walk with a waddle, because we have... Anyways, but uh, we all have these different kind of walks. That's not the walk I'm talking about. I'm talking about the walk that the Lord has for us. He, he uh, mentions walking and pathways, and Tony even sang about it tonight, those pathways that we get to choose, and, and he, he has a path that's established for us, and he wants us to choose that path and stay on that path. And so I want to pray here tonight. And uh, we will get into this. Dear Heavenly Father, I just come to you in Jesus' name, and I, I pray that um, you would meet us here tonight. You would meet with us. You would be communing with us through your Holy Spirit in a mighty way. God, I thank you for the, the songs we got to sing leading up to, these moment, to this moment, Lord. And, uh, they were dealing with me. They were speaking to me, and uh, God, that song, El Shaddai, Adonai, God, your grace is just this continually poured out, not only at the moment of my salvation and our salvation, but it, it's continually poured out on my life and our lives as Christians, God, it's, it's simply amazing. God, I pray that you would pour out your grace on uh, my words here tonight, your mercy on me continually, and even in this message, Lord. God, I pray that you would move in a mighty way, that you would speak uh, through me and uh, through this message, God, and move in the prayer time uh, in a mighty way, in a powerful way. God, just move here tonight. Thank you for this time. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In Galatians 5.25, it says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 says, For, if we, for we walk by faith and not by sight. It's been a long time since the Lord's done this to me, but um, I don't think this is what he wants me to preach tonight. I've been wrestling with something since Thursday and been fighting it and been refusing to write things down about it. Brother Jake, let's go somewhere else. We pull up uh, Psalms 34. Someone sent me this verse earlier in the week, and I just began to study and began to look at it and I already had my message prepared and was just finalizing it and studying over a few things, last minute things. With this message, it's all about the walk and uh, I just I can't do it. Uh, I've been wrestling with God about it all since Thursday night and I, and I, I can't do it. I can't, I can't continue on with it. That's what I wanted to do and now what he wants to do. But in Psalm 34, just the beginning, the intro, it says there a Psalm of David 
when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. So let's just get ready, Brother Kyle. I have no notes. This could go 20 minutes or two hours. But as I began to look at that, I said, like, who is this Abimelech? And I started studying and started looking for Abimelech, and I found Abimelech in Genesis, but I couldn't find him anywhere where, where David might have been. And so I started looking a little bit more and doing a little more research, a little more studying, and all of a sudden I came out with the fact that David had, was, was there before Achish, and you remember he changed himself. He, he acted like something that he wasn't. And as I studied a little bit more, many believe that Achish is Abimelech, that Achish was his kingly name, and Abimelech might have been his, his earthly or his given name. So I told you to go to Psalm 34, but let's go to 1 Samuel. Chapter 21. Let's read this story of 1 Samuel chapter 21, starting in verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 21 in verse 10. It says, And David arose and fled that day for the fear of Saul. And he went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish and said unto, unto him, Is not this David, the king of the land? Did, not they sing, did, did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and he was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and he feigned himself mad in their hearts, and he scrabbled on the doors and of the gates, and he let his spittle fall down upon him and upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, you see, the man is mad. Wherefore, then have you brought him to me? Have I need of a madman? Do I need another madman around me? He's asking. That you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence. Shall this fellow come into my house? I was reading those scriptures earlier in the week and just... Again, wrestling with God and thinking about these things, I thought, man, David put himself in a lot of interesting situations. He found himself in a bunch of interesting places. And I just started recalling the stories in my mind that, that, uh, that I've learned, that I've been taught, that other people have preached to me. And uh, I thought about uh, when he was there and, and the prophet came to anoint uh, him as king. And, and, and here he is, uh, his father's there, and his father lines up all his other brothers and says, here are my sons, here they are. And we find David in an interesting place. He's nowhere to be found. He's, he's not with his brothers, and, and, and the prophet goes through the, the, the line, and he gets to the end, and he says, do you have any more sons? He says, yeah, I got one more little boy. He's out in the field tending to the sheep. Just in an interesting place when he should have been there with his brothers. And it goes on, and we know that, that later David, he was taken to, uh, taken to uh, Saul, and he was there to play his harp. And he was just in this, this interesting place. And, and, and it says that, that, that Saul begins throwing these spears at him. We, we find him in another story that he's, he's in a, a valley uh, uh, where no one else wanted to go, facing this giant, just in an interesting place. We go on past this point, and we find him there in in an interesting place, standing on a rooftop, staring at a woman bathing. He keeps finding himself in these interesting places. I thought about him and started thinking about my own life and how God sometimes puts me in interesting places. And how when it comes to those interesting places that we have decisions that need to be made. I think about David and, and all those stories and the decisions he made, and some of them were the right decisions, and some of them were most definitely the wrong decisions. But when I started thinking about this story, and how he was fleeing for his life, and how he was going uh, to this place, and, 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 and found himself in a, in a place that I believe he shouldn't have been in Gath, there uh, away from where God had, had anointed him to be king, he ran and he fled to this place, I believe a place he shouldn't have been. 
I'm still not convinced whether he made the right decision or not. Whether he made the, the decision that God wanted him to make once he was in that wrong place. Or, or, or if it was just him doing it and God blessed him anyways. But nonetheless, we see David there and, and, and I believe he's reflecting on that time. In this book of Psalms, in, this, in, this, in, the, in, the, uh, in Psalm 34. You know, I don't know where God's going to lead uh, me next, where God's going to take me and, and my uh, family uh, next. I don't know what kind of interesting situation he's going to put me in, but I hope and pray that in whatever situation it is, whatever situation is God leads you to and takes you in and puts you in, that you would seek him in everything that you do. I, I believe that in this particular instance, uh, David, uh, made this decision quickly and rashly, and it worked out for him. But that's not always the way to go. There's time, as a matter of fact, that's not the way to go. We know that we need to be seeking the Lord. And in this, I believe that God, David is, is just pouring out his heart to God because of his deliverance. So back in Psalm chapter 34, verse 1, he says, I will bless thee, Lord, at all times. I will bless thee, Lord. At all times. He's running. He's trying to flee for his life. He makes some poor decisions. As a matter of fact, just before this, the verses just before this, we know that David's in the, in the, in the, in the prophet's house and he's taking showbread that he shouldn't be taking and he's taking a sword that he, that he, that he might have not been taking, should have been taking. And then we know that later, because of those actions, those men be, are killed. They are killed because of his actions, because of him not being in the right place. But after all this, he steps back and I I believe he's reflecting on this and he says, I will bless thee, Lord, at all times. His praise shall, be, shall, shall continually be in my mouth. You know, I know there's times in my life that I've made the wrong decisions. I know there's times in my life that I've tried to do things on my, my own way in my own timing. And I have to admit that uh, it's because uh, I, I'm a pastor or an elder of this church it doesn't mean that I, I don't still do that. I'll confess to you today that I was just doing that the past couple of weeks. A door was, was shut in, in our lives and I began to try to figure it out on my own. I began to try to make it happen any way I possibly could. I mean, searching every option I possibly could, looking at everything that I, that I could do, that I could fix it, that I could uh, make the situation the way I want it to work out. And it didn't work. All my options were exhausted. All my choices had ended. Everything that I possibly thought I could do was, was over and done. And in the end, I could have got angry and bitter about all of that. But ultimately, I stopped and I said, you know what? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that he shut every single door that I tried to make work. Praise the Lord that he shut the door on, on every single thing that I, that I tried to, to force, to make happen, to, 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 to push through. Praise the Lord that he did those things. And I just sat there and said, you know what, God, you've, you've got this. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you all the time. I'm going to praise you continually. Even though it didn't work out the way that I thought it should work out. Here's David. He's being chased out. He's been anointed as king. And he's being chased out of the place that he's anointed as king. And yet he's praising God. Reflecting on how he's going to praise God continually. Verse 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. My soul shall make her bo boast in the Lord, and, and the, the humble shall hear and therefore and be glad. 
David says, you know what, I'm going to take this circumstance, this, this situation where I was acting like a madman. I'm going to take this thing where God delivered me in a mighty way, and I'm going to boast in that. My soul shall boast in the Lord and what he's done, what, it, what, it, what he has done in my life. And you know what it says? It says, because of that, it shall make people glad. In Matthew chapter 5, and verse 16, it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And so no matter what's going on in our our lives, what's happening in and around us. We need to be boasting on what God's doing and has done in us and through us and what he's going to do. David, listen, my soul's going to boast in the Lord. I love these words. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. I'm going to praise him continually. Verse 3, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Well, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'm ready to go out and just exalt his name. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, but it's the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation. That means that we have to go out and we have to exalt his name. We have to proclaim his good news to a lost and dying world. I'm ready. And David says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. I hope and pray that you're ready to go with me and with Brother Kyle and go and exalt his name to everyone we come in contact with. Verse 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me. From all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. He was in a desperate situation, in a desperate place. He sought the Lord, and the Lord heard him, and the Lord delivered him. You know, I think about well, this past week I was praying for. Uh, Brother Kyle a lot and uh, praying for the things that he was uh, dealing with. Um, you know, I'm not the pastor of this church, uh, but he is. And I was thinking about how he must have felt to lose one of uh, his own, the person that God had entrusted him with, under him. My heart was broken for, Cal, broken for Calvin and the family. and My heart was broken for him. I never um, experienced it like that. The closeness of being so close to a pastor and then knowing that he's dealing with that. I just was seeking the Lord. Asking him to hear me, to hear my prayers, that he would comfort him in that time and give him the strength. I think a lot of times we get very consumed with ourselves. I know I'm guilty of it, praying for myself a lot and the things that I need, the things that I want, the things that I desire, the things that I think God should do for me and in me and through me. I'll be honest, I, I was, uh, is these words here delivered me from all my fears. My, my fears were for him this week. And uh, it's amazing the way God works, the way God moves. David was there in this desperate place and he cried out and God delivered him. As they looked unto him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. The poor men cried and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his troubles. The angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear him, and they delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I went through the Beatitudes a while back, I uh, believe, in here, and, and talking about how blessed we are. And blesses the man that trusteth in him, that places trust in the Lord. You know, I thank God for this church. I thank God 
for, for this congregation, for this body of believers, for these people and the, those that have placed their trust and faith in God and know that he's going to deliver them. And tonight, just the reminder that the Lord is good, that he is going to be there, that he is going to deliver you, that he is going to, to, to be that, that rock, that strong tower that I read this morning in Psalm 18, that he's going to be those things, that he is good all the time. Verses 9 through 14 go on and talk about the fear of the Lord. And it says, Oh, the fear of the Lord, ye his saints. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What, men, what man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. And the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The cut off, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Starts off there and says, oh, fear the Lord. Again, this isn't some sort of fear like he's going to come and strike us down at any moment. This is a loving fear of a God Almighty who created us, who created the very... Uh, earth, the very universe, the cosmos, everything that we have and see and, and, and us, he created. He has the ability, he has the, 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 the say so. And in that he has the power to remove the things that he wants to remove. But again, that's not our fear. Our fear is, is, is of disappointing the one who created it all. The one who sent his son to die for us, the one who, who laid down, uh, who sent his son to lay down his life, and it says that it pleased the Father to do so. You know, I don't want to disappoint my Father. I don't want to disappoint my Heavenly Father. I want to be pleasing to them. Again, as is, is a, is a being in this church and, and, and being uh, here in the, in the roles that God has set me in, I, I want every single one of you to have those rewards, those good things that come out of fearing and loving the Lord. I think it would be amazing. We all get there to heaven. We're all standing before the judgment seat of, of Christ, and we all have these pile of crowns surrounding us and these Rewards just laid out by God Almighty for, for, for us here that, that, that we're serving Him. And the great thing is that we are, we're all going to know. We've been taught. We, we've read His Word. We know that, that it's nothing in and of ourselves. It's nothing good that, that we could have done to earn those things. But it's only by His mercy and His grace that we receive those rewards, rewards anyways. And we'll be able to just pour them back out to Him. To relinquish them over, over to him. You know, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like there and, and what kind of mansions we're going to have. But I hope and pray that you have the biggest mansion there. I hope and pray that you have a prime spot right next to that crystal sea. I hope and pray that, that you, your, your house, your mansion overlooks the throne room of God. That you have that, that perfect uh, job or whatever it is that he has for you to do there in heaven. And, and you're serving and working with him because, because you've been faithful in the things that he has for you here. Because you loved him, because you feared him. The Bible describes two different people here in this particular portion of text, verses 9 through 16, and talks about those that fear the Lord and love him and follow him. In verse 16, it says, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. It says, To cut them off from the remembrance of the earth. And sadly, this is a, a, a bittersweet portion of text. It's so sweet because we're going to receive so much, those of us that fear the Lord. But it's bitter because there's an end coming where many 
There is no eternal life awaiting them. It takes me back to that other part we were talking about, about not being ashamed of the gospel. And we need to try to reach as many as we possibly can before we leave this place. Well, the truth is, we're not guaranteed uh, tomorrow. We're not guaranteed another second. We just saw that yesterday with Brother Tim Lee's granddaughter passing away, 16 years old. And we need to try to get as many as we possibly can. The truth is, we're not guaranteed another second because the Lord could, could call us home. We prayed that prayer this morning. God, allow us to be faithful that today because the truth is, you could come and help us to be ready and watching for your return because it could happen today before we close our eyes to go to sleep. You could return. The Bible says that the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. I think about, can't help but think about the book of Revelation when I read those scriptures and think about some of those great battles that are going to take place. And, and, and they're great battles if, uh, for us that are on the Lord's side, but for those that do evil and reject Jesus Christ, it's, it's not a great battle. It's, it's not much of a battle at all. It's a total annihilation. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is going to come in the clouds with his vesture dipped in blood, with the King of kings and Lord of lords written on, 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 on his thigh there, and, he, and he's going to be riding on this white horse, and he's going to speak the word, that sharp two-edged sword is going to proceed out of his mouth, and all those that are in the valley of Megiddo will be destroyed. The beast, uh, the, fa- the false prophet, and the Antichrist, they will be cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. And those that rejected Jesus Christ, those that, that refused to accept His truth, those that didn't listen to the 144,000 during the tribulation, those that didn't listen to the two great witnesses, they will be annihilated. The Bible says that the valley of Megiddo will be filled with blood and guts and the fowls of the air will come and devour those blood and guts and it will be filled up to the horse's bridle. This whole valley. They will be cut off from the remembrance of the earth. So we know the rest of the story. It says that Satan will be bound for a thousand years. It says the, 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 the lion will, 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 will eat the grass. The bear will, will lay down with the lamb. All of these things, we, 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 we know this. It says that Jesus will come and rule and reign for a thousand years. And at the end of that thousand years, that, that Satan will be loosed for a short season. He will gather another great army together. It says this, they will be like the sands of the seashore. And Jesus will come again. And there will be total annihilation again. It's bittersweet. How great it is for us that, 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 that read this and receive this and understand it and fear the Lord. And we'll stand there one day and, like I said, and hopefully receive those great rewards there in heaven for the, for the faithfulness, for the things that we've done, for, for soul winning, for, for doing all these things as the Bible says we receive crowns for. But how sad a day it is to know that there's going to be so many that reject him. They turn their face from the Lord. Verse 17, it says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. I don't know if I explained very good uh, earlier what, what I was trying to say is I, I can't put myself in Brother Kyle's shoes. I couldn't even imagine what he was dealing with. I couldn't even imagine. But at the same time, I, 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 I believe I feel a small portion of that. Of hurting and you're hurting. I'm sitting back there in one of the back rows at the funeral on Friday and just hurting for Brother Calvin, for his family. And I thank God that, that he heard my cry that day. I thank God that he was delivering me out of, out of my personal troubles for, for him that day. Truth is that I believe there's a lot of things in this church that I don't know about. 
that you guys are dealing with, that, that the struggles and trials that are happening in your lives. And the psalmist pours out these words here as great encouragement for us to cry out to, to God Almighty, to cry out to Him to deliver us, to remove these things from us. David was in a desperate situation. He was in, 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 a, in a, a bad situation where he, he heard the, this king speaking and, and he was there alone. There was no one else with him. He had fled on his own. He, he was there before Achish and he was uh, most likely going to die. Didn't, was not, is not this David the one that, that they were dancing about and singing about and saying, man, just... Uh, he, he, Saul slew his thousands, but David slew his ten thousand. Isn't this him? And now he's thanking God for hearing this righteous cry. Maybe tonight there's something that you're dealing with or holding on to. Or just having released over to the Lord. I want to encourage you tonight when we have a time of prayer at the end. Of, tonight's the night. Allow Him to hear your cry. Allow Him to hear your plea. To deliver you from those troubles. Verse 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. He deliver him out of them all. If we will allow Him, He will deliver us from every single affliction. The Bible says many are the afflictions, but He delivers them all. Delivers us from them all. He keepeth all his bones, and not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Thank the Lord that He never leaves me in a dry place. That He always step in, steps in and, and fills me up again. Again, just sharing a little bit of what happened the past couple of weeks and me trying to, to make those things happen. That, that's where I could have gone. I could have got discouraged and just sat there and cried about it and, and, and pouted about it and wondered why God did, wouldn't, wouldn't allow these things to happen in my life that I wanted to happen the way I wanted to happen. I'm telling you, the Spirit was so moving and strong that day once all, all options had been, had been, had been taken. It was just this, this Spirit of peace, Spirit of joy, that overtook me, that it was going to be all right. There was no desolation. There was, he didn't leave me desolate. He didn't leave me in that dry place, but he was right there with me the whole time. And finally he said, it's about time you let all this go. It's about time you poured it all over to me. God got the victory that day in my life. God got an amazing victory that day in my life. And it was just this past couple of weeks. It's amazing when he works like that and he'll continue to do it as many times as we need him to over and over and over. I wish there was something that I could say to you to say, you know what, if you'll just do that, you don't have to make the same mistake I must, I've made. I wish that for so many things. I wish there was something that I could tell you. If you just do this, you'll sin no more. Well, the Bible doesn't tell me that. The Bible doesn't give me that, 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 uh, uh, that authority to say those things. Man, just like I sat there and I heard for Calvin, I heard for you guys that are struggling with things and dealing with things. And I wish there was something that I could say and say, you know what, you don't have to deal with this anymore. But these words here, these things here are such a comfort. So I believe that's why God laid this on my heart tonight, just to, maybe for myself, to hear it again. To just be vulnerable this evening and pour it out to, to you guys. And to also let you know that, uh, that I love you and I care for you. And that I hurt when you hurt. But I also know that God won't leave you in that desolate place. That he'll be there in all your affirmations. And he'll see you through it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father.
come to you in Jesus' name. I didn't particularly want to be in this vulnerable place this evening, God. You know that. You know that I've been fighting it and rejecting it for three days, and I most definitely could have been more prepared for this particular set of scriptures, but um, God, I've never seen you fall short in this area either. You've allowed me to do this a couple of times, or you've, you've made me do this a couple of times, and every time. It's either for myself or many others that are in this room. God, I pray that tonight's just the same. As you've been dealing with my heart, just reading through it again, that you've been pouring out what other people needed in, 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 in this place, in this body, these people that we love so much. You know, we love each other and we care for so much. God, I pray uh, that we would be pouring out your praise, that we would be showing it uh, forth from our soul, from the very bottom of our soul, just pouring it out to everyone we come in contact. Now the truth is that someone came in our life and poured it out to us. And now it's our responsibility to go and pour it out to others. Because as we saw tonight, there is a destruction. There is a hell waiting those, a lake of fire waiting those that that don't accept you. And so God, we have a, a great, great commandment, a great responsibility to go and share, to go and tell. God, just give us the utterance. Give us the boldness. Give us the things we need. And then, God, also when those times of trouble come, when this uh, uh, time of weakness comes, that we would turn and we would rely on you. That we would allow you to work, that we would cry out to you to move in situations, and God, that we wouldn't try to do it on, on our own. We wouldn't try to handle it. The situation in our own. God, most of all, we wouldn't make those, those horrible mistakes. God, as we mentioned, David a, a couple of times making big mistakes. A couple of times maybe trying to do things on his own and make things happen. They, they led to other, other uh, bad things that came to happen later. God, I pray that wouldn't be us. We'd be just relinquishing it over to you from the beginning. God, even deal with me on this, obviously. Lord, I pray that you would move now during this prayer time. God, that you would continue to move over in uh, Awanas, Lord, as they're entering into their council times. And, you know, just that so you'd speak to those little children's heart and you'd allow the gospel to go forth tonight. If there's someone over there that needs to be saved, that they would be saved. God, just uh, move now, again, during this prayer time. And we love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jeffrey. It's always a good reminder uh, that uh, we are, when we do it our way, we make a mess of things. When we do it God's way, uh, man, it always goes right. And uh, thank you again for that. I'm going to ask our ushers to come at this time and hand out our prayer sheets. That was loud. All right. As uh, they're passing these out, you see um, uh, a couple of things on here. I want to point out, praying for our representatives and senators again uh, this evening. Uh, again, we're about to have a transition of government in just a few days, and so... I want to continue to pray for those that are in office uh, to lead in a way that honors God and then also see the church's Christians leaders in the states of Minnesota and Mississippi, uh, specifically tonight. And um, under our church, you see a couple of things we've added. Those who've uh, recently lost loved ones, want to continue to keep them uh, held up in prayer and uh, for a fruitful new year. 
There's a lot of uh, opportunities I, I believe that God's going to give us this year. Uh, but just as we saw this morning, and Brother Jeffrey said again tonight, we've got to be faithful to go. Um, the, the harvest is plenteous. The labors are few. And so we'll pray that uh, we'll see a fruitful new year through our obedience to the Lord. So let's take, uh, we'll take about five or ten minutes, and uh, we'll spend some time praying in groups, two or three, and then we'll uh, open up the altar for individual prayer. Let's pray.